being one of those and then you have found them in plants you have found them in various other living things around the globe nematodes have come to show themselves as some of the most abundant yet multicellular organs on earth and in general you get to see it being divided into three branches including plant nematology they have the animal parasitology as well as the free living nematology but this morning we're going to be focusing on plant parasitic nematology which we're going to be understanding what exactly it is. Therefore, the Department of Agricultural Production in the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, Makere University, in partnership with the Future Africa Institute at the University of Pretoria, with the funding from Carnegie Corporation of New York, is having this live discussion here on NTV Uganda and also online to discuss the wonderful world of worms. And I know there's people in Belgium as well as Kenya that are ready to understand this wonderful world of worms. Here to give us more insight into the world of worms is Dr. Nicholas Kajimu, who is on my left. Dr. Nicholas Kajimu is the early career research leader and also postgraduate of fellow University of Protea. Good morning to you, Dr. Kajimu. Good morning, Regina. How are you? I'm fine, how are you? When did you first interact with a worm? Um, I've at first, I just saw what we see in the gardens during rainy seasons, the so-called earthworms. Uh, but like from, in, from your intro introduction, uh, those are not what we are going to be talking about. Okay. Today. Yes. All right. So these ones, I first interfaced with them while doing my master's in Ghent University. Why an interest in worms, particularly? Uh, when I was doing my undergraduate, I, did, I have a bachelor's degree in horticulture at my, from Makerere. I realized that in the department, or in the, that then it was a faculty of agriculture, there was only one nematologist, and that is Professor Talwana, with whom we are going to be discussing mm -hmm. today. So I was like, I think this is a very good uh, field to specialize in, and um, I started looking for funding uh, towards that line. Okay. Yeah, and I ended up at uh, Ghent, where I did my master's. And then I went to, to Stellenbosch, where I did my PhD. And uh, I've been now doing a postdoc at the University of Pretoria. OK, all right. Yeah. Well, we are very definitely delighted to have Professor Herbert Halwana. Uh, the reason as to why Dr. Kajimu is in the field of expertise he's in today. Professor, good morning to you. Good morning, Regina. How did you get to fall in love with worms? Um, can I say accidentally? <laughs> um, well, as a student, you're taught worms. Then I was looking for a job. And I ventured into Namlonge, the uh, Dr. Research Institute, for a job as a student part time. Mm -hmm. And the person who was working there was working on nematodes. So, yeah, I need somebody to help me. And that's how I fell in love with nematodes since 1993. Wow. So when Kajimu says he, he fell in love with that, so for me it was accidental, like a job, and then I went there. Uh, when the guy told me, what should I do for you? I'm mm -hmm. going back home. I told him, can you get me money for masters? He said, okay. If you're doing the matters, I said, yes, I'm doing that. Okay. And the rest is, is a history. Okay. So. <laughs> Professor Talwana's uh, Department of Agriculture Production, College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences at Makere University. Now, next to him is a beautiful lady, Dr. Shahasi Yusuf Athman. Good morning to you, Doctor. Good morning, Regina. You're most welcome. Thank you. Now, what's your story with worms? My story starts from my undergraduate degree at the University of Nairobi. So I did a BS in agriculture, mm -hmm. but towards the last two years of the, of the program, we had to specialize, so I went for crop protection. Mm -hmm. And so nematology falls under crop protection. And my mentor at that time, Professor Kimenju, is still at the University of Nairobi, introduced me to the world of nematologists. That was in 1999. So since then, I did my master's in nematology in Ghent University, the same university that mm -hmm. Kagimo went to. And then my master's, my PhD was also in nematology at the University of Pretoria 
in, in South Africa. Okay. Dr. Shahasi is in the Department of Plant Sciences, Microbiology and Biotechnology College of Natural Sciences at Makere University. And they have shared for you how they met the wonderful world of worms. But we want to first understand deeper what is nematology in the first place. And I'll have you, Dr. Shahasi, taking lead on this. What is nematology? Nematology is basically the study of nematodes. So what are nematodes? Nematodes are roundworms. And um, there, there's a big group, like you said, there are so many, there are so many. It's so diverse. It's one of the most diverse uh, living, living organisms in the world. So just to give you a quick fact about nematodes in the world, out of every five living things in the world, four are nematodes. Okay? And um, Does that include human beings? Yes, everything. Okay. Yes, yes. And then they say that for every one human, there's 70 billion nematodes. So nematodes can be found everywhere, from the mountains, in the deep in the sea. Those are marine nematodes. We have the animal parasitic nematodes. These are, these are the, the worms that we know, you know, the hookworms, the pinworms, and those are really big. We can see them with the naked eye. Now, the plant parasitic nematodes are very small. They are less than a millimeter in size. So they're microscopic and they are uh, not segmented, they are, they are uh, transparent, you cannot see them with your naked eye. So nematology is a study that is usually packed under plant pathology, but in essence it's actually hidden. While a lot of focus is given to mycology, which is the study of fungi, uh, bacteriology, which is the study of bacteria, we have virology as well which is the study of viruses, nematology is not given as much attention. It's usually hidden, you know, somewhere under plant pathology. So for me as a plant pathologist, I'm a nematologist, and it's really hard to teach pathology and not put in nematodes, you know, mm -hmm. somewhere. So the plant parasitic nematodes, because they are very small and they're microscopic, a lot of farmers don't know that they exist because farmers appreciate what they see. If they can see the, 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 the pests with their naked eye, they will appreciate it more. There's also very less uh, focus on research in nematology. So um, one of the reasons why we are here is to put a spotlight in nematology as a discipline, to focus on why we need uh, uh, nematode experts, more of them to be trained, why we need more research, to be put in nematology, just like we put in a lot of money in virology and bacteriology and mycology. So um, I think because the focus is on plant parasitic nematodes, I think I'll leave it to Talwana to, <laughs> to add more on that. That's I was going to yeah. say that we do have agricultural production department yeah. here. Uh, so uh, it can maybe broaden the scope for us yes. in terms of plant parasitic nematology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, as you said, they are microscopic compared to to the worms we have, yeah. uh, the earthworm. Um, people see if I have uh, a round worm, if I have a hookworm in my stomach, and yeah, somebody will see it. And so, in veterinary medicine, in human medicine, they are prominent. So uh, they are given attention. Now these are microscopic, so nobody looks at them. Um, but they cause damage, they cause great losses. Uh, but when you talk about losses, tell someone 10% loss, says okay. And the symptoms are subtle. Uh, you can't mm -hmm. put it to say, oh, this is caused by a nematode. What are the yeah. symptoms yeah. that yeah. could be indicators of their existence? Mm -hmm. yeah, the only symptom you'll see is poor growth of a crop. And anything can cause that poor growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody will think of nutrients, somebody will think of water, mm -hmm. somebody will think of anything else, or even seed than nematode. Now, for us, the only thing we do is get a shovel, get soil, extract the nematode, and see if it is there. And that's when you can uh, tell. tell that it's there. So that way, <laughs> people don't, it's, uh, it's underground. Mm -hmm. It's an underground thing, so we don't, we don't know. Until you, until you extract and look. Okay. Yes. All right. But then also, um, in regards to nematodes, mm. I mean, we are all supposed to be coexisting. It's yeah. an ecosystem. Yeah. Um, their existence is simply to look for food and nutrient, mm. and that's why they engage a lot in human mm. or plant for this uh, mm. discussion. We are focusing on plant. And so they come into the plant uh, pathology structure mm. just for nutrition yeah. and for, f you know, for food. So... Uh, are we not then causing destruction to their existence? Uh, no, um, it's like for, if you go out 
to do a business, any loss to that business, you have to pay attention to it. So if you're a farmer and you're growing a crop and something is taking away something out of that crop, you need to control it to get the maximum yield, the, max, the potential yield you can get. Mm -hmm. So that we'll have to control them. Uh, but having said that, not all nematodes uh, are, are bad. Yeah, they are good, so we leave them. Okay. So we control the bad ones, the bad guys. It's like um, all insects are good. Uh, the difference with being and uh, I'll, 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 I'll talk about the yeah. good name. No, no, what I'm saying, <laughs> the difference between me and Shahasi is, for us, she says she's a pathologist, mm -hmm. now for my an entomologist. Mm -hmm. okay. So you see how that how that's diverse nematology is, mm -hmm. that within a discipline you can choose where to go. Yeah. Eh? And she, she's a pathologist. I'm an entomologist. I do with the mauve insects. Mm -hmm. She does mauve diseases. Mm -hmm. He deals with the good things. Mm -hmm. So and that's the, the beautiful thing. So, so Mr. Kajibu, uh, and tell and us and about the good thing to, about no, before, I go, before I venture into that, mm -hmm. and to supplement on what you said, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, if they are in the soil and they... Uh, they utilize, they, they, they are there to simply the survival mm -hmm. for, yes. for their existence. Yes, yes. That, that, that's good because uh, for an environmentalist mm -hmm. would have some concern. They will be like, oh, why are you uh, killing the nematodes? We need them in our environment. Nematode lives matter. Mm -hmm. would be yes. The <laughs> Meanwhile, you yes. can follow the conversation <laughs> online. The hashtag is nematode. Nematode, nematode life nematode matter. matter. Okay, uh, to go back um, in the biology sense, uh, when you provide as they are looking for food, mm -hmm. right now they are already in, a, in the field, in, in, out there in nature. But if you provide enough food for them, eh, nature would tell them to multiply okay. more. Because now they have enough food. So let's say uh, you are growing bananas. And these uh, worms, uh, they are feeding on banana. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, a large um, plantation of banana, you've provided for them enough food so they're going to over multiply instead of you having a banana plantation which is for Dr. Let's say, mm -hmm. uh, first give me a picture of this multiplication rate ah, it is uh, uh, I'll, I'll say in a span of let's say three months you could have like two to three cycles from the from eggs to adult one eh? and the uh, um uh, ban to go back on the banana plantation, it, uh, you would find that if you care w well for a banana plantation, it can take like 50 years. But I've seen, uh, I've never seen a banana plantation taking, let's say, five years here, because most of our soil are infected, are infested with the yeah. with the nematodes. Mm. So. Because remember, I've said the, the multiplication rate is very high. Mm -hmm. the, the temperature is conducive, g given that we are in the tropics. So I, I, they, they over multiply. The banana plantation, which would have taken 50 years, it takes only three to four years mm -hmm. and it is wiped out. But our farmers, again, they wouldn't know that this is due to the nematodes because they would just see bananas falling down. Yeah. And they think probably it is a, um, uh, a windstorm that is, it is, it is causing this. Again, farmers always focus on what is evident exactly. to them, bare eyes. E yeah. Exactly. Okay. And, then, and, and again, it will be difficult for us to convince the politicians to give us funding. Because for them, they're interested in something which will come and cause havoc in a short period of time. Yet, this uh, study of, nem of nematology, of nematodes, has, we've we've observed that the, it it is a, a gradual process. It takes time. Mm -hmm. eh? So le, le, to give you an example, when COVID struck us, you could see all uh, ch says. channels of funding were put into eradicating COVID. Mm -hmm. And before we got COVID, we had uh, the locusts. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. when the locusts were here, all <laughs> mm -hmm. the government the was in. Yes, <laughs> but, but the, the nematode is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Because before you have fungal issues, the nematodes have already destroyed the, the crop. So they've caused the secondary infection for fungus, bacteria, viruses. You get it. Wow. So they are the silent killers, I would say. All right. Snipers. <laughs> the silent killers. Yeah. Wonderful world Snipers. of nematodes. Yeah. Uh, back to you, Dr. Shahasi. Yes. Uh, in terms of the study of nematodes, 
in Uganda because having, you know, I had done extensive study out of the country. Yeah. When you come back here to Uganda, what did you find and where does it stand right now in regards to focal study of nematodes? Um, it's not much, there's not much focus on nematology as a subject. And I think because in the, in the past we've not had enough nematologists, you cannot, if you do not have experts to teach nematology, then it will always be, you know, overlooked. So um, f at the department where I teach, we have plant pathology, but we do not have nematology. So when I teach my plant pathology, I fix in nematodes, you know, <laughs> somewhere one or two topics, but there is no standalone topic or, or program for nematology. The same thing at the College of Agriculture. So uh, while we have entire courses on mycology, we have entire courses in virology, we have entire courses in bacteriology, we do not have courses, especially at the undergraduate level, that are focusing on plant nematology. And so students leave the university without much knowledge and not even knowing what nematodes are in most cases, if you do not put it there in the, in the content somewhere. Mm. So that, that's one of the things. Um, I love nematology, but I have to fix it in somewhere although it's not supposed to be there. Okay. Because th for these pathologists that we are training, they need to be well-rounded. They need to know the entire spectrum of plant pathology. So a lot of students will get out of university and they focus on viral diseases. They focus on uh, In your bacterial. department, how many students do you currently have in the class? We have pathology as an elective, so most of the time we have up to about 15, 20 students choosing to, to do plant pathology. Okay. And then, um, of course, the return rate to MSc in plant pathology is also not very high. Mm -hmm. So these students go and study other things. So you find that Herbert, uh, let me say, is about to retire, <laughs> but there's no nematologist to replace him. Mm, but he trained the Dr. Kajimu, ah. <laughs> well, he was discovered. <laughs> okay, so all right. Then <laughs> so there is that the, the lack of manpower. We do not have enough experts. And then when we are we, when we are developing the curriculum, we need to focus on the entire spectrum of plant pathology, and not you know because nematology is th they are s uh, animals that we cannot see. Then we decide not to see them at completely even in our programs. We need to. Even as experts in the departments, we need to focus on that as well, so that we introduce it to our students early. And then some of them can take up, you know, build interest in nematology, and then, like, like I did, you know, if I wasn't introduced as undergraduate, maybe I would have done something else. And like, remember I said in my introduction, I said that for me to take up nematology, I just saw only one in <laughs> nematology. <laughs> that one, <laughs> and you were telling <laughs> so a job opportunity. I was too. like, ah, this job opportunity. No. Okay. Yeah. So, right. yeah, so it's, uh, it's really a very underlooked topic okay. and study basically so so but so but even the extension um, officers that yet go yet out yet there yet uh, abroad you find it is a an and, and that's what I was going to ask that why did you have to choose to go to south africa for your continued study in this uh, direction um, when i was completing my masters um, my my thesis was on um, liquid culture of of certain of insect parasitic worms those are the good worms um, and uh, it was in a company uh, in Germany. So there was a call to work on a similar topic mm -hmm. now in Stellenbosch, South Africa. That's why I moved from, from Belgium and Germany to, to go and do uh, this research on a PhD in Stellenbosch. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and from your experience, how are they handling nematology in uh, Pretoria? Not, not only just Pretoria, in South Africa, in South they Africa. are very serious mm -hmm. with the nematology research okay. because the, the, they, have, they are funded well by the industry. Mm -hmm. The industry, I mean they are farmers, for, because for them they have commercial farmers. Farmers who, are, who have been producing crops um, for the, Euro let's say, the European market, mm -hmm. which has standards. Eh, they have specific mm -hmm. standards. So um, b you find uh, uh, large-scale farmers who are dealing, let's say, in uh, table grapes or citrus, and uh, uh, for them, they are con constantly producing. Meaning, remember I said when you are constantly producing, you, you've provided enough food. So th they need to 
keep the nematodes mm -hmm. at a low mm -hmm. at low pace. Okay. So even if their government is not coming in well to fund the farmers or the I what what I'm terming as the industry is coming up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So there for them the, the research on nematology is very wide. Professor Chalwana, um, this gentleman was inspired by you being the only singular mm. person mm. in this department, and he joins you. You are inspired by someone else mm. who, from my understanding, was a foreigner, not even a Ugandan. And so if we're going to go by inspiration, we may not meet what <laughs> Dr. Shahasi <laughs> is pushing for, mm. having enough investment in terms of human resource uh, to deal with nematology. Now, what's the status of professional nematology in Uganda? It's as dire as the training itself. Um, I would say I've been a sole rider in nematology in Makerere since I joined in 2001 until Shahasu has joined me now as, mem as faculty member now to teach nematology. Mm -hmm. um, the advantage is within our college, um, so there's an opportunity to do nematology at some two courses at undergraduate and an optional course at masters. So if somebody doesn't opt for it, that means you can't teach. Um, basically, the opportunities are very rare. Not only in, in Makerere, even our sister universities, I could talk of public universities, mm -hmm. there's no nematologist. So I think there's no nematology in any other public university apart from Makerere. Okay, all right. In Inaro, there is no no, oh, there are two people who are almost retiring now, I could say, nematologists, but they are not active in nematology. So there's nobody looking on nematodes in narrow. So, okay. sorry. Dr. Kajimo, <laughs> 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 you have uh, seemingly painted a positive picture to <laughs> nematology. So yeah. let's look at the animal and human parasites no, and their importance. Yes, I'm, I'm going to go there, but before we go there, let me, let me point out this. Uh, like, f as a challenge from what, from what these two colleagues have said, mm -hmm. uh, it is really a challenge because for me, I'm an early career. Uh, uh, I got inspired, I looked for funding, uh, carried out a master's and a PhD and even postdocs, but I've been struggling for almost a year to get any position mm -hmm. elsewhere. So uh, I don't know where, that's why we came here, to create more awareness. Mm -hmm. Some colleagues out there may think that I think this guy is, is not interested in working. But we are looking for institutions to get postings, and they're not coming mm -hmm. because uh, uh, there is really something which needs to be done at a policy level. Mm -hmm. Now to get back to um, the plant parasit, no, the animal parasit worms. For me, uh, I know our colleagues back home, they have pets, like um, mm, the kittens, the dogs. The dogs. Mm. They always say, I want to gun the worm these. So those yeah. are those are some of them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've had so many diseases. Hmm? Elephantiasis. Eh? Elephantiasis, um, for whoever is home, we would say enjovu. Mm. They say, mm. what they were enjovu. Mm. Someone has a whole swollen it's the leg. the swelling that happens mm -hmm. to one leg. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and uh, our people, uh, again, because of um, not knowing what is the cause of this. They, they think it's say, witchcraft. Yes, they mm -hmm. would say so and so, bewitched this person. Mm. But now, those are nematodes, now in the medical sense. Okay. Eh? Then we have a uh, disease like, is it dengue? Dengue? No, it's river blindness. River blindness. River blindness. River blindness. Yeah, river blindness. Now you have, you see worms entering, pe for people who, who are on the river, who stay on, along the river banks, mm -hmm. they have worms entering through their legs, eh? and then they move up to the eyes. They the move eyes. up to the eyes, and they cause uh, uh, river. And how long does that movement take? From and entry <laughs> to <laughs> no, it would, it, like your blood no, system is moving. So it, yes, yeah. so you, like you said, it is a gradual thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. By the time you see, you you get to see the symptoms, the, the they've the overmultiplied the in your system. Mm. You get it. Mm -hmm. So you, like like to go back on the elephant, yes, uh, people you they just you just see them on the streets you're looking seeking for arms, but I don't know. I I wouldn't say that I know what the medical field are yeah, doing yeah. 
to find a solution mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then uh, those are a few examples in, in the animal parasitic ones. But again, we have the insect parasit parasitic worms, what we call the insect killing worms. So now f for me as an, agric uh, an agriculturalist or entomologist, I'm interested in those ones. Because for them, their system is they come and attack uh, an insect, mm -hmm. uh, an insect which is uh, attacking my crop. Remember when there is enough food, these organisms are going to over multiply. Mm -hmm. And as a farmer, I'm looking for a solution. So they will come to researchers like us and uh, uh, we have those worms which are natural enemies of those insects. Okay. We, mu we, mu we multiply them and release them. For example, we, like I talked of the locusts. They would say, uh, what is the Ministry of Agriculture uh, doing, about, doing yeah. about this? Again, locusts have their own natural enemies. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, Dr. Shahasi, when it comes mm -hmm. to plant parasitic nematodes, mm -hmm. what is the importance? The importance is because they cause economic losses. So the reason why we, we want to focus on them, and the reason why we focus on all plant diseases, is because they are causing losses. The losses are either in quantity, where you get less yield, or in quality, where the quality of your end product is reduced. So if Could the quality... Should you explain to us quality and quantity? Where do they apply I independently? So for example, I don't know, these pictures yeah, here. It's okay. mm. This is a carrot here this one here. Okay. This is actually a carrot, but it's infected by root knot nematodes. Root knot nematodes are a very diverse group of nematodes. They infect basically every living plant. Mm -hmm. So that's a carrot. That should have been a carrot, but that's what it became because of root knot nematodes. Okay. So that's quality. You cannot sell that because there's no carrot to sell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Quantity is when you, there's reduced uh, amount in yield in kilograms, because you might get the carrots, but they are small. So if you're selling in kilograms, you have less. Mm -hmm. So you get less money. So they are important because they cause those losses. The first picture there is a banana plant that's fallen. Mm -hmm. That's 100% loss because you cannot harvest. So they cause a lot of damage in the root system. And then because the root system is affected, we have the symptoms that uh, Professor mentioned. And then eventually, even if the plant doesn't die, there's a reduction in the yield. Okay. So that's why we need to talk about them and s uh, let our farmers be aware of them and seek solutions for them. All right. Uh, uh, prof uh, professor, yes. Yeah. And the, uh, before the professor comes in, uh, w even foresters, people dealing in forestry, mm. they would be interested in, in, in nematodes. There is a nematode called uh, the pine, wo pine wilt nematode. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is wiping out uh, plantations and plantations of... Uh, of uh, um, of forestry of mm. pines Pine. uh, and the eucalyptus, uh, the, it is uh, carried by um, um, beetles. Imagine mm. an association of uh, a beetle. Mm -hmm. The beetle carries uh, the, 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 the nematode. The nematode. Mm. Uh, the, 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 it feeds on uh, fun fungus, uh, and uh, that interaction mm -hmm. leads to uh, wiping out of uh, plantations and the plantations, you, whereby you see uh, an area view of, uh, let's say, entire village of plantation uh, drying up. Eh? Okay. So, so if you are dealing, let's say you are uh, dealing in forestry, you've invested money in uh, uh, eucalyptus or pines, which you, are, you intend to harvest in, let's say, in 20 years, and you get that. That uh, issue, it's uh, definitely uh, going to affect exactly, yield, yeah. uh, quantity and quality, and quality as Dr. Shahasi yeah. said. Yeah. And it, it's actually very paramount because uh, as of last year, we did have the government stopping the importing of, you know, pine that aids in the electrification of the yeah. country. Mm. So that means that there's a lot of investment by people who are tapping into that opportunity. Yeah. Mm. Farmers are saying that's the direction. Mm. Let me put my trees there yeah. Yeah. and f after 20 years, I should expect yield. Yeah. Yet quality versus quantity <laughs> might affect because yeah. of nematology. Yeah. Okay, all right, uh, Professor Talwana, uh, there's bioindicators and there's also biocontrols. Yeah. Please do share with us the indicators and the controls. Now, uh, as we said, nematodes everywhere. They're in water, they're in soil, they're, in, uh, they're free living. So as a bioindicator, we are saying, if you want to monitor, for example, pollution, the change in the community, the nematode community, is very easy 
way of determining how that pollution is. Mm -hmm. And so we use them as bioindicators. Two, uh, nematodes say they, they have a very short life cycle. So within one month, you have a generation, or even two generations. So that one eases to monitor the environment. And they are, they are widely used elsewhere um, in people who have the capacity in the seas, in oceans, and whatever, to know how polluted your environment is, how polluted your soil is. It's easier to pick soil and extract for nematodes quickly, and you know uh, what nematodes, how changes are the populations, and all kinds of things. That gives us a, an indicator. Now, the other question about biocontrol is what Dr. Kajimu is talking about, the good nematodes. Now, these nematodes, again, by association, by evolution, they carry bacteria. So they infect an insect, or they go into an insect, and release that bacteria. Now that bacteria digests the insect and causes a soup, while this nematode is reproducing in there, and then they take on that soup. In essence, they are taking back the bacteria, and then they get out of that insect. They have killed it, so they look for another one. So that way, it's very easy, you're not using chemicals, people are afraid of chemicals, there's a solution in nematology. Use those ones and they kill your slugs. If you want slugs, they are there. They are sold in Europe. Here we don't have them. Mm -hmm. We don't even know whether we have them in Uganda. Why? A few hands working on nematodes and no money to work on nematodes. Yeah. And, and again, to add <laughs> supplement on him, yeah. uh, we're talking about bacteria. When the bacteria kills the insect, that interaction to kill, they release so many um, metabolites, so small, those small compounds. Mm -hmm. These compounds can be applied elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You can apply them in pharmacy, whereby when the insect is killed, it is protected against other uh, bacteria g feeding on mm -hmm. this dead insect, mm -hmm. eh? or fungal growth on this dead, dead insect. So there are lots of antibiotics, uh, lots of uh, um, antifungal agents. So meaning you can start from there and you interact with the uh, pharmacists or uh, chemical companies. Now you're not dealing with the nematode itself, mm -hmm. but it's bacteria. Mm -hmm. And that interaction, uh, it is very, very broad. Okay. Only that for us here in Uganda, we are, we are under... Limited hands, <laughs> no money, as <laughs> <laughs> Professor <laughs> has rightly put it. Uh, okay, Dr. Shahasi, uh, tell us more about the model organism. Uh, the model, orga a model organism is an organism that we use to study in the lab. Like the way we use mice, you remember the story about mice for COVID vaccines? We use nematodes as well as model organisms. So they, they help us to understand different uh, metabolic activities, what happens in the body you know, of a nematode and, uh, and, uh, and another li living organism. And we have ver one very important nematode that is used as a, a model organism, C. elegans. So we use it to study other animals, just the way we use mice in the lab mm -hmm. to see what would happen. You know, for example, if we, if we want to study uh, the effect of uh, chemical compound on a human being, we don't test it on a human being. We test it on the, on the mice, okay? So, okay, I'm not saying that we test chemicals on C. elegans and then we, we, we you know, intra interpolate and see what they'll do to us, but we use them to study different interactions in the ecosystem. So that's a good nematode that helps scientists to study all these other interactions. Mm -hmm. So although we have good and bad ones, the bad ones really are uh, underlooked, and especially in Africa. If you go to Europe and the Americas, there's a lot of nematology research and a lot of funding, and the farmers are aware. So like I said, when you are aware of a problem, then you'll take notice mm -hmm. and invest in it, okay? I but because we're here and f our farmers don't know even that these nematodes exist, and that when that banana plant falls, yeah. they will relate it to something else, like wind. It was so windy, yeah. it fell. Mm -hmm. But it fell because the root system is completely Weak. damaged mm -hmm. by nematodes. That's why it fell. What has been the introduction, I mean, the, the reception of farmers in regards to this conversation of nematodes impacting their yield and their productivity? Yeah, well, if I come in there, I think it's... Um, as we said, it's all on banana, where 
you're, you're, you're in the anticipation of harvesting. I have my branches and they fall down. Okay? Before maturity. We, we, before maturity. There the farmers start seeking solutions. Now when you go to a research institute, they go to an extension. They say, oh, there are things called nematodes. What do we do? So the only understanding of nematodes and crops is bananas in Uganda. And I would even say that in Naro, that's why you could get a nematologist working on bananas. And how many mm -hmm. crops do we have in Uganda? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> now, uh, uh, talking about the number of crops, yeah. we have potato, which uh, if you're from the Kavar area or from the highlands, it's the, it's the food and income security crop. Everybody says, I started on potato. Unfortunately, a new worm has come on potato. And again, few hands, we are realizing it too late. Few hands, right? no money. No money. Mm. We are realizing it too late. Now, the worst thing is, this is called the potato system nematode. It stays in soil with or without potato for over 20 years. Whether you have planted the potato mm. or, or not. whether not. But it's strictly to the potato. It's no. Is this a sweet potato or Irish no, potato? Irish potato. Irish potato. So it will stay there waiting for you to bring either a crop which is closer to potato Bring or potato. You, you bring your tomatoes. Your tomato. So if I put yeah. cassava, it will it will stay there. No, it will it wait. Will stay there. It will stay there and wait for you. Okay. Until yeah. you plant mm. tomatoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until you plant egg plants. Egg plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it will come up again. All the relatives of the yeah. relatives of potato. So by the time yeah. you bring in the yeah. potatoes, multiplication. So oh. the <laughs> environment is very conducive. Yeah. Now, the, now the story is. People in the highlands grow potato season in season out mm -hmm. what they're experiencing is reduction in yield mm -hmm. okay so all they do is i go to my neighbor i get my seed is wrong so i get get another seed but i'm planting it already an infected field mm -hmm. so you plant and the, the, the cycle continues mm -hmm. the unfortunate thing our our primary results show all potato growing areas in uganda have this disease what has the Ministry of Agriculture actually done about this information? Um, we, we are engaging them. We are in plenary engagement because all we could do now is to find areas which are relatively free of these nematodes or control in some areas, in some fields. Do a, 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 a smart key control and say, I want to eliminate this nematode and we grow seed from there. And what does that control look like? Um, a lot of things. We could do fumigation. Mm -hmm. We could do chemical. We can do. We are, we are thinking of. Kenya is trying out some. Uh, what could I say? Banana you know, crops. Yeah, uh, using a crop to kill a nematode. So it's, uh, there are some antagonistic crops that can kill it, mm -hmm. but there are still preliminary results. But we need to control the population, grow seeds, so that the seed, which they are selling, is free of nematodes. But right now, as I said, nobody's watching. So I grow my seed, somebody from Minikavale, somebody from Captura wants seed, I put it on a bus, it goes to Captura, I've exported the nematodes there. So, yeah, that's what's happening. And uh, So just <laughs> to be clear, all yeah. potato growing regions in Uganda are yeah. experiencing this nematode yes. right now. Mm -hmm. And yet the president is campaigning for value addition yeah. to agriculture yeah. at yeah. such a time as this. Mm. Where do we stand <laughs> in that direction? <laughs> yeah, because that's again, value reduction, yeah, and on the other side, we're being told yeah. value addition. So and by value addition, they are injecting money in yeah. growing more. So yeah. if they are giving out more seedlings from uh, uh, what you have as narrow, mm. then it's definitely not going to produce the desired. Yes, the desired quality. Uh, mm. That's why I said. I said the the locals potato cheaper may not bother about mm -hmm. how my chip will come mm -hmm. out, how my crisp will come out. Mm -hmm. But if we want to go into a market of quality, mm -hmm. so don't ask yourselves why KFC will not use your local potatoes. Will not buy it from here. Yeah. Oh yes. really? yeah. Let's yeah. speak the Lehman yeah. language. Yeah. Yes. Will not they will not buy, buy it from you. And yet you will invest yeah. a lot because pumping yeah. Yeah. into yeah. them yeah. being a market. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you want to go KFC, say buy my, they want their cheap, same Perfect. size, yeah. same color, 
Now you have somewhere where there is a nematode. And the reason <laughs> why that is so because yeah. of the investment in research yes. to get that exact exactly. quality yes. they want on yes. a continued basis, exactly. yes. which we are lacking in Uganda. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of the potato yeah. chips, uh, yeah. Dr. Shihaz. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I you have seen she it. Them, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Who I have like? seen it on Ugandan <laughs> market. Yeah. And I think then this is where you'd have <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe URBS coming in uh, mm. to, to question. Because uh, local investors and, you know, people who are trying to get money by production of foodstuffs, uh, potato chips in the market, Ugandan market, uh, you will have, uh, you know, a pack of potato chips having a different color every yes. time Not but it's crunchy. the same company yeah. that is doing yeah. this potato yeah. chips yeah. Uh, today they'll have one that has chips that are have half black have a darkness to it yes. or have a certain ring, ring. around the yes. chip whereas if you buy a foreign or an a imported product potato chip it's the constant yes. color yes. taste that you're going mm. to get yeah that's quality and and that's what happened to Kenya we have a lot of potatoes in Kenya but KFC couldn't buy them because of quality issues, yeah? So if you are not consistent with your quality, we can't buy from you. So this begs the question, mm. uh, is the research more important to the farmer or it's more important to those that are in the industry, production industry? Uh, this is a partnership now, because if KFC wants to contract farmers, for example, sorry KFC, if KFC wants to contract farmers to grow a certain quality of potatoes, they have to invest in the farmers. Because these farmers have to be trained on how to achieve that quality. Mm -hmm. okay? Remember what I talked about. So you contract yeah. farmers. Yes. Okay, yes. you contract farmers mm -hmm. so that y you give them all the information they need, mm -hmm. how much fertilizer they need to add, w at what stage do they need to harvest? Because you want your chip to be the same mm -hmm. diameter. You want it to be to have a consistent, you know, color and crunchiness. Sometimes we buy chips in the market here and they are not crunchy. But who cares? We <laughs> people <laughs> are still eating the them. The mm. <laughs> yes. So, but if if you buy a product here let's say Lay's in Uganda, and you go buy it in South Africa, you go buy it in the UK, it's the it same. is the same quality. Why? Quality, standards. Mm -hmm. So okay. because our farmers really, they just, uh, how many farmers are planting potato without no knowledge of anything? Mm -hmm. The only diseases that they're really keen about is the late blight, this, which is a fungal disease, mm -hmm. and now the bacterial wilt, which oh. is very evident because it will clean up your, your all field. All which come after nematodes coming. Yes, mm. and because nematodes are in the soil, they are microscopic, you cannot see the symptoms. They don't, when we went to the field with Herbert, we, we were looking at the potato cyst nematodes. We actually just have, would uproot plants mm -hmm. and see the nematodes themselves. Farmers don't know. They're just saying, okay, our plants, I, somebody said they look like jiggers. <laughs> <laughs> because the female nematode looks, you know, like uh, it's round in shape. Yeah. So our farmers don't know. Even the extension officers that we met in the field are not aware mm. of this nematode. Mm -hmm. But they are, uh, farmers are very much aware of the other diseases. And those, so they manage those ones and do not mind about the nematode. And it's because of awareness. Mm. They don't know. Okay. And like I said, like he said, every small or big farm that we went to has the potato cyst nematode. Mm. The farmers in Kapchora are getting their seeds from the west. When you move those potatoes, you've moved them with the nematodes because that's how they are um, moved from one place to another. Actually, they so just buy a sack of uh, they buy They plant anything and take the other side and, side and yes. replant it. Yes. And by the time they go there, remember we said this. And then it's causing multiplication. Yes. Uh, no, not only that, yeah. remember uh, Tarana said they would take 20 years waiting. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the problem with nematodes is initially there is no damage there is no loss in yield mm. they are building up the populations are building up eventually when the populations have built up that's when it will strike and it becomes disaster it and, becomes then the a disaster. and you can never you cannot ah. eliminate <laughs> them <laughs> at that time yeah when you cannot the eliminate of them the <laughs> potatoes yes. have got black you yeah. cannot eliminate okay. them once they are in your field, when they are in the field yeah, you no. cannot okay. all right so well mm. it has definitely raised a lot of eyebrows the mm. potato cyst uh, nematode peculiar mm. and they have stated that it's one of the challenges right now the focus in terms of research and investment in that research is to the matoki here in uganda mm. but then now the realization of the potato uh, nematodes. It's also bringing light into the question of we want to move Uganda from subsistence 
to commercial farming. Mm -hmm. But how much more as a country are we willing to invest, one, in research, in training? Because if you're saying the agricultural field officers are not aware of these things, then what are they doing in the field? That's the question. And then how do you reach out to farmers to help them understand that some of the problems uh, due to their uh, under productivity mm -hmm. of what they have invested in is because of nematodes. Mm -hmm. But also, when we return, we want to talk about what's the way forward? Partnerships and networking. Okay, all right. So, Professor Hubbard, why nematodes? Yeah, I, I think uh, for the last quarter now we've been discussing how important, how yeah. diverse, how interesting. Um, that's why you said the wonderful world of nematodes, wonderful world of worms, www. It's very diverse, that's very interesting. That's a new one. That's <laughs> Let me write it. <laughs> www. Yeah. Wonderful yeah. world of, <laughs> of worms. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting field. Neglected. But we are not sitting down there and saying, oh, we are neglected, and so we go there. Yeah, as they said, I have less than 10 years to go into my career. And um, I've trained a couple. Alice Nicholas has. I've motivated him to go into the methods. <laughs> but we are saying it's not only the problem of Uganda, it's the problem of Africa. The capacity is not there. So now we have partnerships. The current one running is called the Nematology Education in Sub Saharan Africa with support from the EU. Uh, we are about 17 universities. Mm -hmm. And why are we coming together? Well, she has told you she has no course of nematology. Mm -hmm. Independent, Independent course. course. Yes. Now, if she has goes who is not... And, and <coughs> just before you continue, yeah. and even though she's given the independent course, yeah. if after 10 years yeah. there is a, an evaluation, yeah. seeing that there are few students, because yeah. I know there's a course yeah. in wildlife that yes. was scrapped off yeah, exactly. because of the students yeah. that were interested. But yeah. it doesn't have to be the whole world. It's exactly. not about... Some studies are not about numbers. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, at times some universities, as I said, if there is no description of a course, and somebody teaching it is interested in nematodes, and say, okay, when I'm teaching plant pathology, I'm teaching mycology, I'll, I'll fix, fix it. Yes. it in there. Then that means that whole generation will have nothing mentioned about nematodes. Mm -hmm. So now we're trying as, as a consortium of all, all of Africa, for example, describe courses that will describe a course and tell our partner university and any other university interested mm -hmm. that this is a course of nematology for undergraduate, this is a course of nematology for postgraduate, these are the practicals you can conduct, these are the equipment you need, this is how you can do everything, so that everything is available online. And if you get a brand new Kajim coming in <laughs> from university who has never taught, we give you a sort of a, something on a plate, say so all you need is how do you populate this and run a course? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing. And um, the partner universities, again, uh, for, through this funding, we've got some equipment uh, just to help us kickstart. Like for Makerere, uh, just two weeks ago, we got 15 microscopes. Mm, that's very and good. And that's a good investment. Mm -hmm. But we mm -hmm. just use them for teaching and, uh, and all those kind of things. That, but here in Uganda, we also have Muni University, also getting the same equipment. So we want to see if this can encourage students to look at the methods. I got one student yesterday, in fact, I was in Sarati, and he told me, yes, you taught me nematology, but I've never seen a nematode. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, can you come back and look at nematodes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's a kind of, we teach. At times we teach theoretical, you say, oh, now if I can want to show these students nematodes, I don't have equipment, I don't okay. have a microscope. Right. So that's the kind of thing. Uh, the other thing is um, we form the network of nematology, we call it Pan-African Nematology Network, okay. Panema. So that uh, where we are, that's why I said even this show, as you look now, everybody in Africa who got the link is watching because we want to help tell our policymakers that yes, nematology is important, and if some activity is happening, for example in Uganda now, anybody can listen in it and say, oh, we can also do this in Nigeria, we can also do this in Kenya, we can also do this in Tanzania, so that we improve, I mean, it's about people knowing the importance of this um, uh, nematology. Okay. Also active, right. active plant nematology. Yeah, acti yeah, Panema. The, yeah, Panema, the active nematologists. As I said, in Uganda, we've trained enough, I've trained enough. None you of have them done your due yeah. yeah. no, no. in, in human <laughs> resource now, yes. equipment <laughs> and investment in research. Yeah. In parting shots, I'll start with you, Dr. Mm. Shahasi. 
Um, parting shot, we're done already. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, I, no, think, I think this is, a good uh, this is a very good starting point. We really thank our partners. Me and Kagimu were sponsored for our MSCs to do pneumatology mm. by Belgium, the Ghent University. But you know, we need to, uh, you cannot be funded forever. We need to invest, just like we're investing bacterial wilt of banana, let's invest in pneumatology as well. Okay. Mm. So we need uh, more funding in order to promote and you know we don't know what nematode problems we have in Uganda because nobody has checked so it's mm. time to to do that now and also yeah. we need partnerships with the media mm -hmm. yes we need you because uh, after uh, this I think this is the first um, interface we've had to discuss about uh, nematology mm -hmm. or nematodes so we need to have a working partnership with you um, you find a way in your system right. uh, to see, uh, even if we, we are not sponsored, okay. uh, we will come to talk about that. Um, then we are also looking at funding agents, okay. just to, to, to fund more students. Mm -hmm. She talked about the funding at Ghent, mm -hmm. but it is also, it's also winding, winding up. up. Okay. So All right. <laughs> um, and finally, <laughs> Professor, a big, the biggest question would be, is nematology, and these nematodes in particular, a big threat to the agricultural economy of Uganda, seeing as we are trying to push to move from subsistence to uh, uh, commercial? Yeah. I think I already said we'll control all the aerial diseases we see. We'll control them. Mm -hmm. We have chemicals. No? But if we what you see on top is not what is in down. Okay. Okay. Mm. So, I if if a crop has to have something from down and nematodes are doing harm to it, I bet you you're not going to get anything, mm. either in quality, as we said, on the potatoes, or in quantity, it's reduced. So, and you on anything you'll extract nematodes on any crop in Uganda again, including coffee, they are there. So uh, anything we grow in soil has nematodes. As we said, the only symptom will come 20, 30 years down, you see my citrus, I planted my oranges, they are declining. I planted my coffee, it's declining. I don't send a symptom on top, I don't, it's soil, I put in nutrients. You're wasting more money. So I in the end, it's going to affect the economy mm -hmm. because nobody is looking under the ground. Nobody is looking under the ground, but we're privileged to have Dr. Shahasi being upon one of those that is looking under the ground and bringing those underground studies to reality. Uh, Professor Talwana has good, done a good job in investing in others uh, to be able to join him, create a force of nematologists that can come out and speak and be able to aid in having better quality as well as better quantity in terms of plant parasitic and nematology in support of agriculture in, in Uganda. And of course, uh, Dr. Kajimu here, Nicholas, investment in research is what they're calling upon. Therefore, to the policy makers, uh, to them that have the power and the tools to actually make this a countrywide conversation and let agriculture sectors, the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, be a part of this conversation, but more so implementation or execution, or, or even just appreciation of its existence and its support in taking Uganda from subsistence to commercial, and not just Uganda, because Dr. Kajimu here did testify to us. In South Africa, the investment in it has yielded a lot, especially for the agriculture economy, but for the economy as a whole. So I believe that from the www wonderful world of worms uh, there is hope for uganda now thank you so much to the department of agriculture production in the college of agriculture and environmental sciences Macquarie university and also in partnership with future africa institute or the university of pretoria for funding uh, this particular program and uh, we, and we also do thank Carnegie corporation of the new york uh, also for coming in partnership to bring to life to bring to discussion and to bring to you the understanding of the WWW wonderful world of worms. We trust that uh, this uh, talk show has been informative to you and I trust that now this is going to cause you to be more inquisitive, especially for you who is invested in agriculture, you invested into farming, you want to start some 
planting at your home. Uh, COVID-19 pushed people to do home gardening. Uh, but there's things that happen under that soil, underground of that plant. Be interested. And so you can follow up more of this conversation on the hashtag is nematode to understand better and get in touch with the researchers and the professors in this regard to yield better in terms of quality and quantity. My name is Priscilla Regina Naloga, and thank you so much for having been with us. Good day.